And Third Degree is back with our exclusive interview with former First Lady Grasa Michelle. I discussed with her what it is that made leaders like Nelson Mandela so great and why our current crop are unable to reach that kind of stature. Of course, the biggest issue remains one of leadership. This year has seen an ANC eating itself up as it once again engages in a bitter leadership feud ahead of Mangawong. Time and time again, critics have pointed to a failure of leadership by President Jacob Zuma. The failure to deal with Malema more speedily. The failure to respond quickly in the Marikana crisis. And more recently, the questions raised around what exactly Zuma spent 248 million rand on at his in Kandla home. And what about morality in all of this? Because I think that's the thing that sometimes, you know, we look at the newspaper headlines, the media, corruption, issues around um, governance, issues around how we treat the citizens of this country. Where does morality figure in that? And how do we encourage a moral leadership? That's a, a, a very challenging, <laughs> that's a very challenging issue. Because when you raise the issue of governance and the issue of accommodating the views of everybody, for any reason, people will say, but who is this everybody? You may be raising a very, very valid point, but you are Deborah Pater and you are white. And then instead of taking what you say, if it doesn't suit me, and I say you are saying this because you are white. You see what I'm trying to say? And if I'm grasser and I'm black and I'm South African, but I'm Mozambican. I say something like this, or she says this because she is better off. You see, now that's the class issue. She can say it because she's better off. She can say it because she's Mozambican. You see, instead of taking the, 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 the content and the substance of the issue I'm raising, people will look at what makes us different. And I think we have really a bigger problem here. But your question is morality. I'm not, I'm not prepared to discuss morality in, like a religious issue. I would say the ethics, yeah, I'll call it the ethics of how you behave when you are a public servant. A public servant first, because that's where the problem starts. And servants it's, being the operative word. Exactly, way. because when you take up the oath of saying, I want to serve, there are a number of things which you have to observe to make sure that whatever you do, whatever you say, you are taking the interests of the people at heart. And you have to be able to, to, to understand the limits of what you are allowed to do and what you are not allowed to do while you are a public servant. That's, that's the problem. South Africa has a proud struggle history. The world had high hopes for our young democracy. Yet with every step forward, we seem to take two backward. We can't give textbooks to young children. We are mired in one corruption scandal after another. How do we get out of this mess? I think the confusion comes from there, is that this is a generation which is coming from the you know, the past we all know. Yes, we all want to serve, but we are still very eager to solve our own problems because we see this as an opportunity for us to solve our problems and problems of our families and problems of those we know who can become friends or their comrades, etc. Et the conflict comes there. It's where, yes, you know you have to serve, but you see this is an opportunity which the past has negated you, and you have to use this the sooner you can, because you don't know also whether tomorrow you will be in the same place. 
you may be in a different place. That's the conflict. And it's not South Africa, South, South Africa alone. It is happening in Mozambique. It's happening in Angola. It's happening in Namibia. It's happening in Zimbabwe. The liberation movement is caught up in this uh, reality of how do we uphold the values and the principles which made us take up arms and to be prepared to die for freedom, but how do we balance that with this urge to solve our problems, uh, the problems of our family, our friends, et cetera, et cetera. How do you balance this? And you continue to be in a position where first and foremost, you are there to serve. I think it's a much bigger, it's a much bigger issue than just pointing out, I mean, to people why they are failing, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's really a, a, a transitional process in which the, the ideals and the human need to, to, to grasp opportunities are in conflict. They are in, definitely, they are in conflict. Is there something about power um, that when people get to power, it kind of does shield them a little bit from those original values, in a sense, because you become distanced, even if you don't want to be? Let me go back to, to, to Madiba's generation. And I'm, I'm not talking of him as a person. Just, just remember. How is it possible that Madiba, Walter, Mthaba, uh, uh, and Mbeki, Mbeki Senior, I'm talking of Mbeki Senior, how, how is it that they, they did build this transition and they were not corrupted? Why? And they, they came, I mean, they were the epitome of, of the values of the liberation, but they made the transition in such a way. Go to Walter's place today where he was living. If it were not because their children, they got a very modest house. That's where he lived, he died, both of them, Walter and Albertina. And you come to my place where Madiba is. And you go to where the Tambus had said. There's a difference, it's not the issue of power. I think it's the way you use power. And we should question this. And there are people in the world who are able to exercise power without being distant from one, from the ideals they, 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 they profess, but also not being far from the people. You spoke very eloquently about the need perhaps for a second Truth and Reconciliation Commission, appropriate because Archbishop Desmond Tutu was there. And I don't think we can forget that iconic image of him sobbing as he mm. heard one more horror story after another. Mm the need for a Truth and Reconciliation Commission to exorcise this catharsis you were talking about, the hurts and pains of the past, but from that true reconciliation and forgiveness. You know, uh, because I was, I was talking and I knew that I had a very limited time, what I'm, I'm calling for is not a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's the exercise which can be similar yeah, it's the exercise which can be similar to that one of the truth and reconciliation. I want to insist because that one was more political. And the, the exercise I'm calling is for you and I to recognize that I am wounded and I'm hurting. And in this, I think or I believe that you have to take my pain and I will find a way of hurting you so that you can take my pain. It doesn't take mine, and it doesn't take yours. It multiplies people who, you know, who are in pain. So what we need to recognize is to say, the type of pain I have, it is exactly the same type of pain you have. We have been, let me call it, victims of a system which had, has left us with this. So how do we reach out to one another? How do we hold hands and say, we are going to walk together and for us to work together, then we have to let it go in the sense we have to talk about it and we have to take it out. My final question, I have this fantasy of mm. you and Madiba sitting on the couch watching TV here in Kunu. And, you know, I wonder, you know, you're part of this group of elders, although mm. you shouldn't be called elder well, yet. Well, that I am. Mm. <laughs> um, and you look at it and you, you, know, you think, where, where, are these, where are they going wrong? Do you get frustrated sometimes when you look at us and see they're just not doing it well? Uh, 
Maybe I shouldn't answer that. Especially now, Deborah. I mean, we are going to manga woman. I don't think we should. <laughs> mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's, let's leave that. Let's leave that. Certainly inspirational stuff from Grasa Michelle. Now, we'd still like to hear from you. You can fax us on 11 880 or email us on thirddegree at etv.co.za. We're also on social media. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter. And do join us again next week for a third degree favorite, feedback and follow up on some of our biggest stories this year. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.